throughout the day talking about 40 years of the Clean Water Act and US EPA uh, spokesperson Cam Davis is at the podium work with. She's enthusiastic and cares deeply and passionately about the water and the water resources that all of you are working on as well. Please join me in welcoming Assistant Secretary for the Army, Darcy. Thank you, Cam, and uh, thanks to all of you for being here today. Um, Cam's right. It's um, Always a pleasure for me to be able to come back to the Great Lakes. I, um, although I'm from Massachusetts, I spent uh, several years here in, uh, in actually in Michigan, and it's um, it's my second home. So anytime I'm I'm able to come, I uh, I jump at the chance. And one of the things, or one of the best things about jumping at this chance was to be able to not only come and thank you for all that you're doing, but also to see what progress has been made. Um, I'm going to give my age away, but it was in the 80s when I worked in Michigan, and this is now um, two decades later, and it's amazing to see all the great work that's been done. As you know, uh, this president, President Obama, um, created this multi-year, this multi-agency initiative to restore the Great Lakes with more than 16 uh, federal agencies uh, promoting the Great Lakes restoration initiatives, and I'm just really proud and happy that the Army Corps of Engineers is, is part of this diverse group because we have a lot to offer in helping to restore the Great Lakes. We have a number of authorities that we use and a number of programs that we're working on to, to help to accomplish this restoration initiative. We have toxic areas of concern. The, the core um, has considerable experience in contaminated sediments, and, and we're doing some strategic dredging in these contaminated sediments for certain navigation channels in order to help complement the sediment cleanup work by EPA and some of their other programs. We're also um, taking action on invasive species. The Corps is using not only uh, GLRI funding, but also our base funding, as well as some um, American Recovery Act money that the President saw uh, fit to use here in the Great Lakes um, to help with the operation, as well as the monitoring and the improvements in the Chicago Sanitary Ship Canal, um, which is, as you all know, an integral part of the interagency strategy to keep the Asian carp out of the Great Lakes. In addition, the Corps is going to design and construct some new barriers to help prevent sea lamprey, and we're doing this in cooperation with the Great Lakes Fisheries Commission. We're also doing habitat and wildlife protection and restoration. The Great Lakes Fishery and Ecosystem Restoration, which is one of the programs that the Corps of Engineers ha has, is the premier authority that we use to deliver projects to help restore fisheries and the aquatic habitat here in the Great Lakes. Another action that we're taking is the work on the nearshore health and non-point source pollution. With the Corps' expertise in watershed modeling and, and watershed planning, we'll be helping to utilize that extensively in support of the Great Lakes Initiative. Finally, the Corps is going to utilize Great Lakes funding, the GLRI initiative funding actually, for monitoring and evaluating um, and supporting adaptive management for Great Lakes water levels and flows, and we're doing this in conjunction with the International Joint Commission. While the Corps of Engineers has used the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funds to deliver restoration projects for the Great Lakes, we've also used some of our base funding to protect and restore unique resources. The, President's budget, the President recognized this, and in his budget for the Corps in, in 2013, we include $27.5 million for, Asia, for the Asian Carp Framework, $24.5 million for the Chicago Sanitary Ship Canal Barrier, and an additional $3 million for the Great Lakes and Mississippi River Interbasin Study. As of today, the GLRI has enabled the Corps of Engineers to complete seven construction projects for restoration and to start the construction of two more. These projects have removed more than 550,000 cubic yards of contaminated sediments from the areas of concern. We've also created a 13-mile barrier to prevent the migration of invas invasive species, and we are currently restoring more than 580 acres of wetlands and other aquatic habitat. Within the next two weeks, we're going to award contracts for construction of five more restoration projects with the combination of funding from GLRI, as well as our other appropriations, and some cost sharing with our non-federal partners. One of these contracts is for dredging that will remove about 120,000 cubic yards of contaminated sediments from the Ashtabula River in order to eliminate the remaining beneficial use impairments in that area of concern. 
This project required extensive coordination between the Corps, EPA, Ohio EPA, and the City, County, and Port Authority of Ashtabula. I think this is a great example of how the, under the GLRI we've had partnerships with all of our other agencies that have helped to bring these kinds of projects, these long overdue projects, to fruition. We have another project um, that will be constructed in, constructed in partnership with Brown County in Wisconsin to restore and protect more than 1,200 areas of coastal wetlands in the Fox River Green Bay area of concern while providing capacity for 2 million cubic yards of contaminated sediment. As we talked about today, we had a task force meeting uh, earlier today, and, and I just want everyone here to know, if you weren't able to be at the task force meeting, that we, we remain committed to delisting these areas of concern. The Ashtabula and the Fox River projects are very important steps in that effort, and the Corps of Engineers is very proud to be part of, the, of accomplishing that. We have three other projects uh, with construction contracts that we're going to be awarding um, in this next month. One is restoration of 40 acres of habitat along the Little Calumet River in Indiana. The second is a project for restoring 30 acres of habitat on Northerly Island along Lake Michigan shoreline in Chicago. Um, and the third is a contract that we'll award this month for the Times Beach Pragmites, Pragmites demonstration project that will control and manage aquatic species. Um, I think this is a great um, tribute, again, to what the Great Lakes Initiative has done and also the continuation of it. I was really happy to hear the new leader of the um, Great Lakes Commission say that they passed a resolution saying that the Great Lakes Initiative should be, um, should be extended um, after its five-year life. I think that the accomplishments that um, have been made to date um, under this initiative um, with all of your help and all of your partnership and all of your support will help us to make the case for this is a program that works. It's an area of the country that is important to everybody who lives here. It's important to the entire country. It's an economic engine for this country that I think people oftentimes don't see. And I think it's our job to um, bring that to light to everyone. Um, and I also think that uh, President Obama, his leadership on this issue has been great. And the reason it is is because he sees partnerships, and those partnerships can only happen with people like you, with the dedication that you've given to this cause, as well as to this area and to this incredible national treasure. So thanks for having me today, and thanks for all that you do. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, both of those uh, keynote speakers. Thank you very much. Um, in, in just a moment, you're going to uh, get a couple of announcements on some logistical uh, details. But I just wanted to take uh, uh, 30 seconds here to note that we have heard a series of of announcements and speeches and presentations starting early this morning. And there's a common theme, and the theme is that we are making some incredible progress. We heard about the cleanup in Sheboygan River. We've heard about the cleanup in the Ashtabula River and the near delisting of the Erie area of concern and the new grants uh, here in Cleveland. And the list of progress and success stories goes on and on. And we have to recognize that we are in the midst of an unprecedented experience. This is a once in a generation, if not once in a lifetime, opportunity that we all have, and it's working. We have a lot more work to do, there's no question about it. We've got a lot more progress to make. But one thing I'd like you to do, it's after lunch. The uh, sugar is probably setting in, so I want you to all to take your right hand, raise your right hand, and pat your neighbor on the back for a job well done. Hi, folks. So I have a few more logistical announcements, and then I will release you to go do what you will. Um, so for how participants, our breakouts are going to start at 2 o'clock. So look in your program book, and um, we are running a little bit behind, but we'll make that up. So um, if you can proceed to those breakout rooms by 2, that would be great. For the boat cruise this evening, it is a pre-registered event. If you have not picked up your ticket, you may do so at the Howe Registration Desk. Trolleys will start running from the West Superior entrance on the first floor at 545. 
The boat will leave at 6.30 with or without you. So be sure to get on a trolley and if you can get there um, by 6.15, there should be plenty of trolleys to get you there on time. Um, it'll be leaving at 6.30 and then trolleys will start running again at nine o'clock when the boat comes back to the dock. So thanks so much and go ahead and go to your breakout sessions or to the AOC conference.